Hey, what's up guys? Austin Moore Skills Gaming. In today's video, I'm gonna go over 10 ideas to make dinks fast and dink them. And this will be the only money guide that you'll ever need for this game. And I'm very excited to share this guide with you. Uh, I've been playing so much Dinkum lately. I love this game. And I think I have figured out the best ways to make money in Dinkum. So number one, sell things you find on the ground. Now this method is more for the beginners of Dinkum. If you just started Dinkum and you don't even have really anything unlocked yet, like you don't even have the shops unlocked yet, um, I highly recommend just selling things that you find on the ground uh, and just trying to rack up just a little bit of money right now for number two this is probably going to be the best method if you are a beginner and just starting on dinkum sell cooked food so apples are the most profitable fruit in dinkum and you can find them located in the pine forest where they grow abundantly there uh, and the reason why you want to cook your fruit is because you're going to make more than double your profit so one apple is worth 107 dinks but if you cook the apple you get 390 dinks per apple so it's totally worth it to cook your food if you're trying to sell it i sold about 59 cooked apples and i made about 22k hey guys it's austin from the future and i just wanted to add on to my point about number two selling the cooked food because i know how to make even more money selling cooked food right so this is something that i did in animal crossing and it actually works really well in dinkum but create your own little orchard if you can create your own little orchard of your own little apple trees it's going to save you so much time especially if you uh, make your orchard around your base right and it's really easy to like make an orchard all you have to do is just dig a hole with a shovel and drop um an apple into the hole and then just bury it and then once you do that a little tree will sprout out that's how you know you've done it right but um yeah back to the video so number three make money catching bugs so i spent around 15 minutes just wandering around my island catching anything that i saw and I made about 10K. So I don't really recommend bug catching. I don't really think it's that profitable. Uh, fishing is definitely more profitable, which brings us to number four, make money by fishing. So fishing is much more profitable than catching bugs. But here's the thing, you're gonna wanna keep at least one of every fish and one of every bug because eventually you're going to unlock the museum. And you can make between 30 to 50,000 uh, per fishing trip if you have have a full inventory's worth. I do think fishing is one of the best ways to make money if you're just starting and you have the shops unlocked. And obviously you will need licenses to catch bugs and fish. Now, if you don't really know too much about fishing and you want to learn how to fish, I actually have a guide that will show you step by step on how to master fishing. Now, number five, sell animals. So selling animals, I think is more profitable than fishing if you have the traps, right? So you can go to like an island where there's a bunch of Tasmanian devils or there's a bunch of alligators or a bunch of big birds. I'm not too sure what they're called, ostriches maybe. But anyway, for every Tasmanian devil that I sold, I got a whopping 12,000. Now you're gonna get way more dinks if the animal is dangerous than if the animal is not dangerous because I tried selling an armadillo and I only got like 8,000 dinks, which is funny because the more dangerous animals are actually easier to catch because they'll just walk right into the trap. Like it's super easy to catch. So completing quests is a pretty good way of making dinks. Uh, once you have the bulletin board, uh, people are gonna start posting quests. Like they'll post like hunt this alpha animal, um, which you can make a lot of dinks doing that. I hunted about three of those in one day and I made over a hundred thousand dinks. So definitely worth it. And also too, you're gonna have quests where they want uh, fruit shipments, right? And they'll pay a certain amount of dinks for that. So just make sure you check the bulletin board like every day or so, cause you never know what kind of quest might pop up on there. Diving for critters. And diving is actually really profitable. Now I would recommend uh, having a rowboat and I think it's uh, level two fishing license where you can see the bubbles in the ground if you see bubbles in the ground and the object is not moving chances are it's a critter but if the object is moving it's probably an animal or a fish or you know 
something else and when you're doing diving it's definitely best to do it on a sunny day because if you do it on a rainy day you're gonna have trouble you know seeing all the critters in the water uh, you can see them so much better if it's sunny outside another thing too is while you're looking for critters keep an eye out on anything that sparkles because if it sparkles underwater it could be a pearl and pearls sell for about five thousand a piece uh, at john's store sell big stones on john's scale so after you upgrade the tent and dink them john's actually going to have his own little store and he has a scale on his store you can put like uh, large stones on the scales and some other things too that are worth a ton of money so if you see like a large rock that has like electricity out of it or if you find like a large rock that looks like amber definitely carry it and bring it over to john's store because if you put it on a scale you're going to get like four between 40 and like 80 thousand dinks the next method is going to be use the metal detector now i've made so many dinks by metal detecting However, if I could go back in time, I would have kept some things and I wouldn't have sold them. So when, you, when you're metal detecting, make sure you keep your shiny disc because there will be an NPC that comes to your island that will buy them from you. And, you know, once you sell these discs to that NPC, you're going to unlock some things, right? So you definitely want to keep those. Also, too, keep your old keys because once you unlock the deep mines later on, uh, you're going to use those keys to like get inside the gates to find the chest and there's gonna be some goodies in there so you definitely want to keep those now another thing too is if you come across an old contraption you're probably going to want to keep that too because those are really rare and you can use those to build some really awesome things in dinkum so i would definitely keep a hold of those too Anything else I would sell, unless you're trying to build the towers in Dinkum. Now, if your focus is on money, just go ahead and sell it. Now, if your folk, but if your focus is on towers, then obviously, you know, keep everything you find for the towers. But overall, metal detecting is super profitable. In only a short time frame, I racked up hundreds of thousands of dinks just by metal detecting. All right, and number 10 is going to be ruby farming deep in the mines. So this is kind of like a late game advanced uh, way of making money. But once you have the mines unlocked and you see like anything that's dark red, dark red is a ruby, like dark red and sparkles. It's definitely a ruby. And John will pay a lot of dinks for those. I, I love going into the mines and just hunting for those rubies. I found three ruby stones and I made over 150,000 just from one trip in the mines and it was great. Um, now the mines, if you're going into the mines, you're definitely going to want to have like a copper weapon because there are so many things attacking you down there. Like there's just so many bats and there's like these glowing crocodiles and it's just really annoying having to fight all of those. So if you have a really good weapon, you can just knock them out in a few hits. Now I do plan on having a mining guide uh, one day in the future. But um, yeah, until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And I'll see you in the next video.